All right. So how did you go from, you know, that very first deal? I mean, how long did it take you to become a millionaire? Let's just go to that question. Man, you know, <laughs> that happened a lot quicker than I expected it to. Mm-hmm. Um, and I think that's more about, I got really, really good at finding good deals. Mm-hmm. And so the things that I did, end up, uh, t- two things, right? There's two things you need to grow and scale a real estate business, right? You need deal flow and money flow. If you've got access to deals or leads consistently yep. that you can buy at a discount and access to money to buy them that isn't the money in your personal bank account, you can grow your business at whatever pace yep. you're comfortable growing. And by walking into this bank accidentally for my first deal, I built a relationship with a small local bank who wanted to fund my deals at essentially 100% financing. Because what they were saying is, you bring me a deal, we'll finance 85% of it, and then you can use this line of credit that we've given you for the other 15%. Yeah. Right? And so I'd solve the money flow for that particular problem. And so I just needed to solve for deal flow. And the reason I focused my business on solving for deal flow is because through these meetups that I was going to consistently, everybody, no matter how seasoned or new they were in investing, they all said the same thing. Uh, I'm a real estate investor. I want to buy some deals. I just can't find anything to buy. There's no, yeah. there's no good deals left out there. And this was back before it was as yeah. hard as it is now, yeah. right? <laughs> like, and so I, I, that was the problem I felt like I needed to solve is if I can find a way to find good deals consistently, at a minimum, I'll have a room full of people here who will want to buy them off me. And so I'll, I'll know I'll be able to make money. And so I just focused my business on acquisitions, on on finding deals. I I I think every book I read when I first got started from a real estate perspective was about wholesaling. Not because yeah. I wanted to wholesale, but because wholesalers are the people who are good at finding deals. And yeah. I was like, I'll just model my business after them and then I'll keep everything. Yeah. Yeah, it's funny. It's like... Yeah. Uh, finding, I mean, people, we buy, we know people who are buying hundreds of houses a year, hundreds and hundreds a year. And so like, if the deals are out there clearly, so I think maybe the biggest perspective shift that new real estate investors need to make is to stop saying, I can't find a deal and replace it with, I don't have a deal finding system worked out yet. Yeah, that's it. Right. I don't have a deal finding system. Mm -hmm. And then all of a sudden it's like, okay, well, what is, what does that look like? How would I build a deal finding system? And then you don't have to worry about that anymore. Because if that guy can buy 200 houses a year, 300 a year, there's clearly a system that delivers those kind of results. Yeah, so I just don't know what that system is yet. I don't have a system. So now I got to read some books on how to get deals. So let's let's shift into that a little bit. How do you find deals in 2023? Yeah, the same way you found deals in 2017. <laughs> it, the, 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 the science of it hasn't changed. Um, you, you know, it's, it's, it's real estate, guys. You, you buy something at a discount, you add value to it, and then you monetize it, right? That's, That's it. what real estate is. Um, and so how I'm finding deals now is the same way I was finding deals then. Now, the amount of, you know, money or effort we might pour into a particular strategy might shift based on what's going on. Um, right now we find most of our deals through, uh, direct mail and cold calling. Uh, we do direct mail, cold calling. I've got a Google AdWords campaign and then we do some other stuff, do some radio, some billboards. For me, it's like, I just want multiple fishing lines in the water and you know, you get different bites, track which ones are working make some adjustments. But yeah, man, it's it's all about finding people with equity and motivation and figuring out a way to either get on the phone with them or get them on the phone with you. Yeah. It's it's it all works. That's awesome. Yeah. It all works, but do you recommend one of those above another for new investors? What should uh, they start to get leads? Yeah, for for a new investor, it, it, you're either going to have you're either going to spend time or you're going to spend money, right? It doesn't matter new or experienced. To find a good deal, you're going to spend your time to find it or you're going to spend your money to find it. So if you're a new investor who's got a busy nine to five and you make a decent salary and you don't have the time to put in to really hustle and find what I call the hustle leads, the free leads, yeah. then you're going to have to spend some money. And so figure out you know, what's the best off market deal finding strategy for you that you can A, afford to fund properly and that B, fits your personality. So what I mean by that, if you were going to spend money and um, and you're going to send direct mail, but you only got $500 to send direct mail, that's probably not the best. You're not going to send enough mail that's going to generate you a deal, right? You need to do enough research to figure out like in your market, how much mail do you really need to be sending to get a deal? And if you can afford to pay that, it's a decent strategy. It takes some time to get there. Um, uh, so look at your budget and figure out what strategy you want to use and then relentlessly, consistently pursue that strategy until it yields a result. If you are a person who doesn't have the money 
but you've got the time that you can put into the hustle, there's tons of free places to get leads. It's more about are you going to do the work, analyze every lead that comes across your desk, make offers on every deal that comes across your desk, and then follow up with those sellers or those agents. Like that's where the real work is. Like people get leads all the time. Like a wholesaler will send them something or an agent will send them something and they'll go, ah, oh, it's probably not a deal. And then they don't do anything with it. Well, did you really analyze it in depth? Did you figure out, yeah, it's not a deal at what they're asking, but what price point would you be willing to buy it for? And then did you make that offer at that price point or were you too scared to make that offer because it was so low and you didn't want to have the agent do that for you or you didn't want to reach out to the seller and do that for you? So you really didn't work that lead to its fullest potential. But I feel like if you work your hustle leads like that, if you're going out and you're talking to agents and saying, send me everything you got that you think needs some work that you're not getting any movement on, send me all your, send me all the expired listings, send me everything that's been on market for longer than the average day is on market and sit down and literally analyze every single one of those, find out what's the price you would be willing to pay for it, even if it's $150,000, $200,000 less than they're asking, and then submit that offer anyway. Most people don't want to do that because the 99% chance it's going to get rejected and they feel like it's a wasted effort. But mm. if you're going to hustle and find leads, it's the kind of work you have to do. Is the birth strategy dead in 2023? Absolutely not. Absolutely not. I have to say that, Brandon, because I'm doing a Burr boot camp right now. Oh, nice. <laughs> <laughs> How does Burr work in 2023? Uh, you know what I love about Burr is it forces people to become fundamentally sound real estate investors mm. for it to work. Yeah. Because the whole concept of Burr is I have to buy something at a deep enough discount to be able to afford to fix it up and then be able to make money on it and then be able to refinance it at a new higher amount and pull that money out that I put into it, which means you have to have gone and found yourself a really good deal. Um, but buying really good deals is the foundation of real estate investing. Yeah. Like you can't make money in real estate unless you're good at finding deals that you can monetize. Yep. And and so is it dead? No, it's not dead. It's harder. It's harder, especially if you're not gonna build the systems and put in the work to analyze and make offers on the volume of deals that you need to in order to produce a result. So said differently in 2017, you can analyze maybe half the deals you have to look at now and come up with a couple, two, three, four good ones that you could bear out of, no sweat. Interest rates were lower, um, prices of homes were less. You could get yourself a pretty decent deal fairly easily compared to now. Now, you're gonna have to analyze twice as many, you're gonna get rejected twice as much. You, you have to buy at such a deep discount that it's gonna be a lot of work to get to that burr deal. And I also think people need to be okay with not burring 100% of your money out. Yeah. Like if you can find a burr deal and get half of your money back, that's pretty amazing. Yeah. <laughs> it's pretty amazing. It still allows you to grow and scale. Would you would you say it's accurate to say then that the burr strategy is like in order to be good at it, you have to be good at like what flippers and wholesalers are doing. Mm -hmm. Now, normal rentals, you don't have to be as good at finding deals as flippers yeah. and wholesalers. But mm -hmm. if you want to do the burst strategy, you just have to apply those skills to rentals and then it works. Yeah. You have to be good. You have to be essentially be as good as a wholesaler at mm -hmm. finding your deals. Yeah. And then be able to find the money to take them down and then yeah. you can get your money back out. It's just, it's just harder now, but it's not dead. Yeah. I think it's forcing people to learn how to go and build those systems. Because, you know, not everybody wants to have 100 doors, Brandon, or, you know, yeah. they, they, they don't they don't want to have that kind of a business. And so they would say, well, I don't want to put that kind of work in to find a deal that works. And now the system or the industry or the market is telling you, well, you got to put a little more work in now. And those who are willing to put in that work, yeah, can absolutely find a bird deal. And those who want it to be a little easier are going to have to be more creative with their exit strategy.